Hello there! This is the video where expectation will meet reality. What I mean by that is, we're going to look at real life circuits now. All this while we've been looking at simulations, oh, ideal battery. Oh, where's my battery? I had a battery. There we go. Battery and things like that. But today we're going to look at how people in the world use, uh, how do they draw circuits? Are we looking at cartoons? Ma? How they use symbols to draw circuits? We're going to learn some of those. It's just a very quick refresher. You should have seen most of them before. We're also going to look at how to draw in diagram, interpret diagrams. So you'll be able to do a bit of drawing now, so make sure you have some paper with you. And lastly, the most important part, we're going to look at what is internal resistance and what does it do, what, what, how does it affect the circuit again? That's what we're going to look at this video. So by the end of the video, make sure you know like what these things are. First off, circuit symbols. You kind of have to know a couple of them. I'm going to show you some popular ones. Let's start with that on top. So the cell, whenever you see cell, right, this basically mean battery la. Okay. The longer side is the positive, the shorter side is the negative. So they call these cells, you know, these battery that I was showing you last last round. These are cells, aka batteries, positive, negative, two lines. Yeah, this one is a whole bunch of them, la, joined back to back, like wait, I have another one for you. So you have two positive negative positive to negative, positive to negative, you put two. There. EMF add up. Okay, we looked at that in the simulation. Yeah, we did that. Sometimes they're lazy to draw too many batteries, they just draw dot dot dot. Okay, la, can la. Anyway, so that's some of the ones to start with. There are other things. These are all the meters that you use to measure some things. M meter measure current. Volt meter measure potential difference across two points. Government meter, okay, they'll ignore that for now. So current things to remember is Emitter, you want the current to flow through you. So ideally, your emitter will have zero resistance. How to say? Zero resistance. So that everything can flow through and can measure how much is flowing through you at that point. Voltmeter, on the other hand, you it's not actually part of the circuit. You're just going to measure between two points. So this, let's say, is part of the circuit. You just want to somehow intercept two points to say, hmm, between here and here, what's the difference in energy? Remember, we looked at all those animations last round. So ideally, you don't want current to flow through it. So you want your resistance to be as big as possible, infinity if possible. Because you don't want current to flow through it. It's not part of the flowing current circuit. Okay? Yeah, those are the main things. And then there are some other ones like the switch. This is very funny because you're wondering like, why, why like this? Huh? Because the old switches look like this. It's like, oh, I have, yeah. I have this one here. It literally looks like a chopping head chopper, like chick, 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 chick. You like literally, when it's down, both sides are touching, then you connect the circuit lock. When the switch is open, your circuit is off. On, off. There we go. Some other ones, common ones that we'll look at also are these ones in chapter 19, maybe a little bit in 20. The lamp, they put an X, sure. Resistors, variable resistor means this one can change resistance. The arrow means can change, like this one is a fixed resistance. Thermistors and LDRs, these are LDRs, we'll look more on those later. Heater is basically like a resistor but it will become very, very, very hot. Those are the ones that we'll look at later but these are the basic ones you can find in the syllabus. I will attach a page as well, you can also find it in the syllabus on page... What is this page? 68. Very handy summary of all the symbols that you need to know. I just took out some snapshots from there. Anyway, let's return to this. So go and memorize some of these symbols if you don't know what they are. Otherwise, you cannot draw. You cannot interpret. So you need to know what these symbols are. So before this, we've been looking at circuits like this. You will need to know also how to draw them in symbol form using your knowledge of all these symbols. Law. Okay. Oh, battery means that, so like that. Uh, resistor, oh, it's another way to draw resistor, I should say. This zigzag one is another way you can see people draw. CIE, I think we'll use more of the square one instead of the zigzag resistor, like this. Anyway, so that's the circuit symbols. Now, I mentioned expectation reality. What does that mean? This is what it is. Previously, when we have a battery connected to a resistor or some load, this is what we call the load. If we didn't connect, your battery will burn, remember? Because current is too big. So you must put some load. And if your battery is 12 volts, 
you measure potential difference between here and here should also be 12 volts. So in this case, this is the ideal case, uh, expectation. Uh, your EMF is the same as the terminal potential difference. This is what I call VT. Or oh, I should call this terminal potential difference, which is VT. Terminal means the battery terminal, or positive terminal, negative terminal. This terminal di potential difference is also the potential difference between this whole re circuit resistance. Okay, this is also the same as the circuit resistance. I'll call this VR. La. I'm just creating names. Okay, you should know this from the before part. But in real life, your battery is not perfect. This is what it means. So your battery, ignore their symbols, that's a bit different. Your battery EMF is 12 volts. 12 volt battery. Do I have a 12 volt battery here? Yes, I do. 12 volt batteries are the square ones like this. Okay, you'll see them in more powerful stuff. Battery EMF is 12. But then all, you connect to the positive and negative terminal to measure the terminal potential difference. Eh? Come out only 4 volts. Whoa. So where did the... How many volts? How many? How many volts lesser? This eight volts. The question is, where did the eight volts go? Battery can supply twelve ma, but when you measure the ends of the battery, like that, only come out got four. Where's the eight volts? The answer is, there's a culprit in the battery itself that is stealing your energy. This thing. It's what we call the small r, which is internal resistance. Oh, this is how real life battery is. No battery is perfect. Like humans, no human is perfect. Anyway, you have internal resistance. So basically inside the battery itself, you have a resistor and it's also getting hot. You're losing energy. So I say, you get hot lah. I draw like that. So energy lost. That's heat. Sure, battery will get hot. So that is the problem that we're going to look at today. Internal resistance, you need to take that into account when the question says so. Because sometimes they look at ideal battery on the left, sometimes they look at this um, real, real life battery like on the right where there's internal resistance. So how do you define this? There's some space on the handout on page 1 at the bottom, you can write down some stuff. But what is internal resistance? In a sentence, you want to be able to say that into, uh, this internal resistance is the resistance of the cell. So inside the battery itself. And that resistance causes a loss of voltage, also known as um, loss volts. You'll see the past here talk about loss volts or energy loss, like what we looked at before. Long. Okay. Uh, because of that thing, originally supposed to have 9 volt come out, but when you connect in a circuit, suddenly only got 4 volts come out of your battery. Okay. So I'm going to draw a circuit now, so that we can have a practice of drawing circuits. Here's the notes. Last week we looked at... Last week? Last video we looked at the potential difference, EMF and all that stuff. There's some space here. If you've already drawn stuff there, that's okay. Just find a piece of paper and draw it. But I'm going to draw it here in this space about real life circuits. Let's do some drawing. We'll start off with a small pen. So I'm going to draw that cartoon picture that we were looking at just now. Let's draw a battery first. We have some EMF. Okay. But how do you draw uh, resistance in the battery? There's too many things there. So what we usually do is we draw a dotted line to represent the battery, like the actual, you know, the actual battery dotted line. But inside that dotted line, we draw a resistor. So here we have the internal resistance and then go out okay so this represents the battery internal resistance let's add a switch shall we add a switch here that's how you draw one and then I will add a, a emitter a part of the circuit then come down go to what shall we choose ah? uh, another another resistor like we will add, we will call this the load resistor because must add some resistance. Ma. If not, your battery will burn. So you add a resistor, then go back. Must connect, must complete your circuit. Okay. 
wish I had a ruler. A digital ruler would do wonders here. Okay, so we got our basic circuit done. This is our battery. The e this thing representing the EMF, internal resistance R. So I'm going to label this off. This R here is the resistance. Here we call this the total circuit resistance or load resistance, uh, big R, small r. Differentiate both. Uh. Then here is our EMF E. This switch, I'm going to give you a name, switch S, just because. And I think we're good. Okay. So now what happens when you close the switch? Where is current going to flow? Think about it a bit. Uh, you think here positive, right? Here negative. Current will f when you close the switch, current will flow this way. Flow through the emitter, flow through the we call this I current. Flow through the resistor or the to all the resistance of the circuit combined together, and then flow through the battery back again. So that's your current flowing round and round and round and round in circles. Now I'm gonna draw a table and I want you to think about how you're going to complete that table. Let's say I connect one voltmeter from here to here. This is called, whoa, that is big. Let's make it smaller a bit so I don't have to squeeze. Let's call this V1, the first voltmeter. And that is somehow I can connect it to the wire there, lah, from here to here. And these are points A and B. How about that? The, the purpose of me doing that is so I can measure the, volt, the potential difference between there, here to here. And then I connect another voltmeter. And that will be the one across this resistor. Let's call this C and D, point C and D. So this one will be the second one, lah, V2. Second voltmeter, measuring potential difference. Now I want you to think about when you have a table like this, if my switch is open and close, what will I measure in these two voltmeters? Uh, voltmeter 1, voltmeter 2. What would you measure? Think about that for a moment. You can pause the video if you need more time. So yeah, think about what would you measure here. Let's start off with the V1 first. So V1, you're measuring between the ends of the battery terminal. This is called terminal. Across the terminals. Oh, yeah, across. Across terminals. If the switch is open, means the battery is just by itself. Lah. It's not being used by the circuit. So you're literally just taking something, just measuring the both ends. So that case, you should get um, just the EMF of the battery. So that's when you have E. That is when you're just measuring the battery only. Okay. Open means you're measuring battery only for this one. Okay. So 9 volts, 9 volts. No current flowing through the battery. So internal resistance is... Just there. You just have whatever you are given. What's going to be measured at V2 when your switch is open? By the way, open means uh, your circuit is off because no current flowing. Uh, V2, no current flowing means nothing wrong. So your V2 over here, you will not measure any reading because here, no current flowing. No current flow means no potential drop low. Circuit not, clo not complete, ma. your switch is still open. Then once you close the switch, like that, ta, oh, suddenly current can flow. Zzz, oh, oh. Now because there's current flowing through the circuit, there is current flowing through this internal resistance. That means oh, mm, you're going to have a potential drop here. It's v small r. This one here will have a potential drop already. So these are what we call the lost volts you will lose some of these things. So now when you, you close the switch and you check this one, oh, oh, it's not going to be your EMF anymore. It's not going to be your original battery EMF. It's going to be a little lesser. It's going to be what we call the terminal potential difference. So 
Oftentimes, you just call it VT. Whatever you measure between the two ends. Or, it will be the same as, uh, no space ID, or VR, which is the potential drop across the whole circuit. Same things here. And what are you going to measure across V2? V2 here will be your potential drop across the whole circuit, which is also known as or same value as your terminal potential difference. Same one, you measure between C and D or A and B is the same. So I'm just going to make a note here. Your, you know, when you close your switch, your VAB, the potential drop is the same as VCD. It's the same as, it's also known as um, a terminal PD. This is when the switch is closed. Same line, it doesn't mean matter whether you me measure between the battery or between the resistor, it's still across everything. Okay, so that's the main thing you need to know about what happens when the switch is closed, switch is open. If you're kind of brain jam at the moment, it's okay, go back and rewatch it a bit. Ask some questions, uh, screenshot, ask a friend. Uh, one more thing I want you to, to add on to this is, how do, you, how do you visualize this as a graph? Well, I'm going to draw a small graph up there, I'll save some space down there because there's one more graph I want to show you. But what if, how would it look like if you want to plot terminal potential difference or terminal voltage against mm, time. How about that? Maybe you'll start off when the switch close, a uh, switch open. Open means off law. Then after a while you close the switch means you're turning on the circuit. Just connect everything ma. How would you draw the graph? Well, if you measure terminal PD at first, it's just going to be your EMF. I'm going to start off just like that. Oh. If the battery on there, right, 9 volt, is 9 volt. But once you close, the battery is being used. And when it's being used, the internal resistance will cause it to drop a bit. So it's going to drop to something else. No? Um, this will be the VR of it. Yep. Okay. So hey, suddenly it will drop down to some value here. This drop here, uh oh, is because of loss volts due to internal resistance. <sighs> someday, someday, maybe you can invent a battery cell that has no internal resistance. People have been trying to do that. Increase the efficiency of this battery, uh, converting between chemical to electrical energy. There's some loss, remember? Efficiency. Okay. We try to get high efficiency so that we can maximize no loss votes, no none of this problem. Okay, so is there an equation for all this you're wondering? Yes, it's not a revolutionary equation. It's not like, wow, something new. It's just a by the way kind of equation. So to summarize all that we've been looking at, there is a way to write it out. Here's how we can write it. So we looked at internal resistance. There is a way to summarize all that we know about this internal resistance. So firstly, we have the, the, the problem of when you have internal resistance, your terminal potential difference between both ends, when your battery is being used, drops. So you can say that, hmm, your terminal uh, potential difference is your original EMF that is supplied, the battery, written on the battery, minus whatever loss volts. So I'm just going to say those are V, VR lah. Loss volts due to internal resistance. Oftentimes you will see this rearrange a bit. So I'm going to rearrange and say, so therefore EMF of your battery is the terminal potential difference plus the loss volts. I'll label this a little bit. This is the one that you'll be using a lot. Um, this here is your terminal PD or also it's the same value as your total circuit uh, potential drop due to the all the resistance. La. Same thing. This one here is your loss volts due to internal resistance. You may see sometimes it's quite helpful to also use combine this with uh, Ohm's law. Remember Ohm's law? 
Ohms law means if you want to have calculate with current and things like that, you can say, oh, E is IR plus IR. You can look back at your circuit for reference what this means. Because remember, V equals to IR. This is general Ohm's law. Same thing here. IR is the current flowing through the whole circuit resistance or terminal PD. And this I small r, this one is the current flowing through the battery times the internal resistance. One more way you may see people write it is I r plus r, same thing. Okay, so make sure you know what these terms mean, know where it comes from, don't just blindly use, you must make sense of it. Okay, let's look at uh, and some example first before we look at the graph. First one's on page 46. A nice and short and sweet one that kind of some requires us to apply our understanding of whatever we have looked at just now. Here we have a cell of constant electromotive force, constant EMF law, what it means. Oh, you may be wondering, miss, the EMF can change on uh. Well, yes, over time it could change because EMF depends on your chemical uh, energy. So if your battery run out of, I don't want to say run out of chemistry, but run out of chemical energy ready or then your EMF will decrease or, but usually we don't want that to happen so in experiments you try not to have a changing EMF you want to keep it constant so here we're keeping it constant too for simplicity's sake so we have an EMF E for that battery and it drive a current push the current out through an external resistor of resistance R PD oh in this case V is our what we call our terminal potential difference yes what you measure at both ends of the terminal so if you connect low you put a voltmeter like that connect to here and here okay so now what they're asking us the internal when the internal resistance increase ooh, internal resistance increasing that's not good so this is increasing what is the effect on the terminal potential difference and on the current through the circuit think about this for a moment while I label this Take a bet. Which one will you choose? A, B, C already. Write it down. Pause if you need more time, okay? So, this is how we can think about the effects of internal resistance. Firstly, internal resistance, when it increases, it increases, it can cause a number of things. Firstly, that means there's more lost volts. So more lost volts, that's one effect. Oh, I should do this. More lost volts. Because more energy will be lost already, ma. now your internal is so big, so it will get very hot. Energy lost as heat. So more lost volts also mean um, your terminal potential difference will be, will be lower already. So terminal potential difference is now lower or smaller. So that means our V here will decrease. So decrease, decrease, ah, this one out already. So it's either A or B, decrease. If you're wondering why you decrease there, well, because remember we looked at that, 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 that equation just now. Your EMF is your um, terminal potential difference plus the, what you call that, the lost volts. So if you have more lost volts, your E is the same. So this thing has to decrease oh, because you are losing more and more. Ma. Okay. Or in other words, an easier way to remember this perhaps would be your original energy you have minus off everything that you lost. So the lost volts is what you measure at both ends of the, of the battery. Yeah, this is the idea that governs this thought. Another effect you want to think about is the current. It does affect the current too. When you increase internal resistance, it means the current has more to fight against when it's trying to move in the circuit. So your current is going to decrease as well. So you have a smaller current because of larger total resistance. Because larger total resistance. So these are the two effects you will want to note down somewhere. Sorry, I'm kind of blocking a bit. And then from there, you look, hmm, V decrease. 
I also decrease. So the answer should be A in this case. This is when uh, the a small r is changing. Internal resistance is changing. Let's try a calculation with this idea. See like, hmm, okay, we know this equation. We kind of know what's happening, but how do you calculate things that have internal resistance in them? And for that, we're going to hop over to page 57 right here. Ooh, it's a paper 2 question. There's about 10 marks for this one, so you can find the past year uh, question online or you have a handout, sure, go ahead and try it. But, 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 this one, I want you to just try, take a look at it, see if you can figure out how to calculate it based on the equation we looked at. Give yourself a maximum of about 13 minutes to try it out. I know you say, Miss, but you haven't shown us any examples yet. It's okay, you can try it out just to see how far you can get. Don't give up quite yet. Just take some time to think through it. Um, hint, hint, you will need to use your Ohm's law, V equals the IR, and that internal resistance thing that we we're looking at. So the IR plus IR thing. Okay, so let's are your tools. first two hints for you to pause and try out the thing first, and then we'll go through this together. It's more efficient for your brain that way. Okay, so we have a battery resistor. Hey, this looks like literally the thing we just drew, drew er earlier. So, hmm, okay, good to know. EMF is 9 volts. That's our E. By the way, um, the, the past year will use big E, I think. Well, some of the past years, instead of writing this curly E, they will write big E. Same thing. I just prefer to write the curly E because there's so many of the big E already. There's like energy, Young's modulus, all these all also big E. So after I confuse, you confuse, everybody confuse. <laughs> okay, so internal resistance R, potential difference across the battery terminals is 6.9 volts. So that's 6.9 volts, which is from this end to this end, across the terminals law. And that also means... That is also 6.9 volt drop for when you go past this resistor. So across the resistor, also 6.9 volt. Okay, because the only one resistor there. Now the first part they ask us, oh, explain. Mm. Use energy to explain why the PD across the battery. So PD across the battery is this one. PD across battery is not equal to the EMF of the battery. So PD across the battery, we call terminal, not equals to EMF. Why? We mentioned that. Aha. Because of the culprit, internal resistance. But how are you going to talk about that? That's only two marks here. So you need to have two main ideas. Explain. You need to explain why. Hmm. The first point is you want to talk about um, what is EMF? How do you differentiate between EMF and PD? So you're going to say EMF is firstly the... The total energy available. So let me write that out. So shortcut EMF. Why did I write the curly E? Anyway, is the total available total available energy. That's what is supplying now. But some of it is going to be lost, wasted. <sighs> energy per unit charge, I should say. Why energy per unit charge? Oh, because you know W equals to QV, so V is energy per unit charge. That's why we need energy per unit charge. You don't have to write per unit charge, it's okay. So EMF is the total and available energy, but you can put a but here. But there is some energy lost. To what? So there's some energy lost or used or wasted. You can use any of these terms uh, because of that culprit internal resistance. Okay, some energy loss used wasted in internal resistance of battery. I'm going to shortcut and say internal R of battery. Okay, and loss if you want to talk about loss, what loss as heat, la, yeah, la, the battery will get hot. Okay, and then if you want to add a concluding statement, this is kind of an extra one, is where you already get your two marks. Therefore, your potential difference across battery will be less than your EMF. Because some of it are lost with you. You supply so much, wasted a bit, then the leftover is what you have to use for the circuit. Okay. Two marks here. That's probably a B1 and a B1. Yep. 
two B1 marks here. Anyway, let's go down to the calculations. Calculate the current in the circuit. How to calculate? Huh? Current is flowing, right? So flow from here, flow, 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 flow. Current here is the same as current here. How are we going to calculate the current in this circuit? Well, you could use the battery side, but that's kind of troublesome. I'm going to look at the, the resistor side. So the current flowing through the resistor is related to its resistance and the potential difference. Ah, V, I, and R. So here we want to use V equals to I, R as our helpful friend. V is I, R. So V here is uh, the potential across the resistor. So that's given as 6.9 volts. Current, we don't know, we're trying to find. R is 5 ohms. Ohm. Oh, I should put the units here to check. Then you divide, lo. I is 6.9 divided by 5, 1.38 amps. In the final answer box, uh, the, the smallest significant figure is, I guess, I could use 2. Sure, let me do 2. So I can write 1.4. But for later calculations, I want, I want to use 1.38. More accurate a bit. Huh? Here are two marks. One comes from Ohm's Law, C1. The other one from your final answer, A1. Still not too bad, okay. So that's the first bit on calculating current in the circuit. Then the next page, they will ask you to do, deal with the internal resistance already. Oh, okay, so no escape. You have to use that complicated uh, new equation, new equation to calculate that. So we want to find the internal resistance R. So you have to remember, hmm, firstly, you have EMF. You lost uh, some volts, and that's your um, terminal potential difference, which is also the VR and VT is the same. I'm going to use VR. So we want to find internal resistance. So I'm going to rewrite this as E equals to, move to the other side first, uh, VR plus VR. This will be, I times the small r, and this will be I times the big R for the resistor. Do we know enough information? I think we do. What's the EMF given to us as 9 volts? So we say 9. I, I, I can write that. Uh, what is this VR, IR? Actually, no need to rule IR. We already know VR. VR, V, oh, this VR we don't know. Sorry, my bad. We know this is 1.38. R, we don't know. Um, this I is also 1.38. Big R, we do know. That is how many ohms are? 5 ohm. Actually, VR already given to us 6.9 volt, but I never mind. Lah. I cut out everything for you to see also. So from there, you rearrange everything, calculate your. Oh, where did my cursor go? R equals to. Press calculator, should get about 1.52 ohm. So this is the resistance in the battery itself. Wow, how unfortunate. Wasted energy. 1.5 ohm loss volts. Okay, so that means here you have a potential drop of some value that is related to your 1.52 ohm resistance. I don't like that. Oh, by the way, if you want to calculate it, VR is just the current through the battery times the resistance that you just found. Okay, never mind. Anyway, I'm just going to write 1.52 here, and that's my two marks. Wow, what comes from? First one is any of these ideas about including internal resistance in your calculations. The C1 mark, and the other one from the final, 1.52. Okay, that's how you can apply this internal resistance. Just remember, it's just you lost some voltage, and the rest goes to the circuit. Next one. Ooh, this is kind of new. Have we seen this before? Power in the circuit. Ring some bells a bit. Hmm. For the battery, the total power produced. Power. What is this? Have we seen this before? I think we have a little bit. Power related in circuits can be calculated by a current flowing past a component with a potential drop. Hmm. So what I and what V should you use here? 
Now you need to know that there's a bunch of stuff, right? A good refresher of chapter 6, okay? So your battery, you're getting chemical energy, convert to electrical energy, okay? And in the process, some energy is lost. So, lost. That is from the lost volts. Lost as heat energy. So in this case, there's some efficiency. <clears throat> efficiency, remember, we use the symbol eta. Okay, how much is converted, how much is going out. So we're looking at the power produced by the battery. So that will be looking at this part, the chemical energy, which is related to your EMF. EMF. So here the power produced will be current flowing through your battery. So that's we found earlier is 1.38 amps. Here the V, really we want to use I times your EMF. What is the EMF? Produce, uh, power produced. EMF is 9 volts, so we say 9 volts. Okay, what's the power produced? 1.38 times 9. That's 12. Ooh, 12 watt battery. Watt. W here is the unit. So I'm going to write, well, I'll just do 12.4 in the final box. So 12.4 is the power input. Power going in to the circuit. Now, what actually becomes electrical energy and gets used? What is useful? Well, that's a different story. We're going to look at that next. Efficiency. Hey, efficiency. So to find efficiency, you need to think of, okay, so we have this much of power supply. We already got 12.42. What is actually being used? Well, if you take away all the lost volts, P equals to I V. Now this V here will be your terminal potential difference. Or you could use the VR, la, the voltage drop across your resistor, also can. They are the same value. So here we have 1.38 times, what is the V terminal? 6.9. So 6.9, that will be 9.5522 watts. This is your output power, what actually becomes useful electrical energy that is running around in your circuit. So this is input, output. Now you can count your efficiency. A Efficiency here is your input over output. Hey, sorry, not input over output. Oops, the other way around. Uh, what actually comes out? And then what actually goes in here. Yeah. Notice also efficiency can be in percentage or ratio. Um, the mark scheme may show either one, but just so FYI, your efficiency can be in percentage or ratio. I personally like percentages, so I'm going to do percentage. So here output will be my uh, IVT. This is my EI. What are those values? Let me just write it straight in. What's coming out? That's 12.42. What's going in? 9.58. Eh? I keep confusing both. Oh my goodness, my brain is not working this time. Output is 9.522 going around the circuit. Battery itself can produce 12.42. Where's the missing power? <sighs> Internal resistance. Lost volts. Okay, let's see what do we get for this percentage. How many percent efficiency is this battery? 76.66666667 I'm just going to put 77%. That's fine. So that means our little battery here, with its flaws, with its internal resistance, you can have 9 volts EMF going out, but because of this, are that kinds of steals i don't know how many volts does it steal a couple of volts so this is lost energy and your battery is only 77 percent efficient so 77 amount of the power actually goes to work to light up your bulbs to um, push your resistors or do whatever stuff also i forgot to mark these things oh my goodness two marks first one comes from um, iv so that's your knowing your power stuff and then your final answer. C1, A1. 
on the efficiency efficiency the first one comes from it's kind of like your efficiency output input and then your final a1 so yeah they do kind of link these ideas pretty often especially when it comes to internal resistance and energy loss here before i end this video here's the last one i'm gonna give you a heads up on a kind of a tricky question they're gonna here in this question on page 38 they're gonna ask you how this current affect the lost votes. Current or resistance, I guess. How does it affect your lost votes? Hmm. Give yourself two minutes for this one or lesser. Try to read through, pick an answer, and come and check. Come back and check if you got it right. You can bring some with a friend if you disagree. Okay. So pause it, give yourself two minutes. Okie dokie, let's see. Hmm, constant internal resistance, good to know. Oops, I meant to choose the highlighter. And an external resistor R. Okay, that's our load. A student record the ammeter and voltmeter reading, so you should have, I don't know, current I, voltmeter V, okay. She then connects a second identical external resistor in parallel with the first external resistor. Oh my goodness, what does that mean? That means another one here that is the same one like that. What happens to the ammeter and the voltmeter reading? Oh my goodness. Hmm. First thing you want to ask is, how does the extra one affect anything? The extra resistor in parallel, here, redraw this. When you connect in parallel, it actually reduces the resistance. Because if you only have one, your resistance is R. But if you have two, your resistance is 1 over R plus 1 over R. And then you inverse it. That is your resistance. Which is, what is the resistance? Well, you add it together, you have half R. So it's not R anymore, it's half R. It's actually smaller. So the first thing you want to write down is, is the, the train of thought. Number one, your circuit resistance decreases. Yeah, I shall write total circuit resistance decrease. That's because now the two connect in parallel, so decrease AD law. Um, then, so... Resistance decrease means the current is happy. The current is like, yay, so now I can have a bigger current. I flow faster because less resistance. Ma. So and that's the second one. Your current will be bigger. Your current measured by this emitter will increase. Also current through the battery. La, so current, current, current everywhere is just I. The number three is because of the current increasing, that means here is current. Here is your uh, R. So that means your VR, the loss volts, will be bigger. Oh. So you can say uh, more loss volts in the battery. This is what you want to write down maybe so you know how to think about loss volts. Because a lot of the past year questions will ask you about, oh, if I change this, what happened to the loss volts? Blah, 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 things like that. Okay, more loss volts or loss energy because bigger... Uh, I R I times R, which is equal to V R lah. Okay, V R V equals to I R. This R, by the way, is a subscript. This R is an actual variable. I my handwriting is a little undistinguishable. V R there tiny R. There we go. So with this in mind, if we look through the the the, the choices, how do we know which one is correct? Emitter reading. Okay, we just mentioned current will increase, right? So you look through, hmm, current is going to increase. Why? Because your total circuit resistance has decreased already because now they're corrected in parallel. Okay, so that narrows our choices down to C and D. Voltmeter reading. This voltmeter reading here, uh, V, is also the terminal PD. Well, I should say this is the circuit, total circuit potential drop which is also the terminal uh, PD, potential difference. This is VR equals VT. Same thing. 
So how are you gonna how are you gonna think of that? How is that related to lost votes or energy? Well, if there's more lost votes, means there's um, lesser energy that is being used here at the resistor. So this is actually lesser, cause you have more lost votes. Lost already, ma. What's left over to use for this resistor is only like that, lor. So what what is changing is actually it decreases, not stays the same. Does not stay the same. So I X like that, lah. Uh, is there another way to think of it? E yeah, you kind of have to know about resistance, though. Um, for a certain resistor, you have a certain voltage drop. Okay, and if you have a smaller resistor, like maybe half R, like what we found just now up here, okay, resistance becomes smaller. Half R means you will have a potential drop, but not as big. Probably half of it. So that's also decreasing. That's another way to think about it. Either through lost votes or what is the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, so make sure you write down these facts, especially this one. I'm going to draw a star here. This thought process, make sure you know how it flows, how to think through it. Before we end the video, I'm just going to show you a very quick graph on a simulation so that you can go and play with it to understand it better. It's right here on GeoGebra. So the idea is whenever you come across questions where they are changing the resistance of the load, uh, the circuit, like for example here, this light bulb here, you could do, you could change this resistance of the bulb, okay? How does the, how does the lost volts change? How does the current change? This will be a good one to connect, okay? So you switch on the switch. This graph here is the terminal PD from here to here. And then versus the current through the whole thing. Okay, so when you change when you decrease the resistance, you see the thing slide, you see this dot sliding down, it means the current is getting bigger. So when your current getting bigger, when there's a current bigger means your terminal uh, potential difference will drop. Why? Because more energy loss. Okay. Then if I make the resistance very big, woo! Your current is very small, almost 0. Point something, 0. 0.57. And the terminal PD is quite big, almost same like the EMF. This is the EMF, by the way. 11.43, 12 volts. So your lost volt is about 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.5, somewhere there. Not bad. Okay, so the goal is in life, when you're connecting a circuit, <coughs> a smaller current is better because that means less energy loss. Okay. So play with this, see how you move around the curve. Notice how EMF is 12 volts, that is the intercept of this graph. I'm going to ask you the question, why is the intercept here EMF? You have to rearrange the equation. There is an experiment on this, I'll post a video on this as well. So you can go get to be familiarized with this. Last one, internal resistance, you can change. The only you think about, why does internal resistance affect the gradient of the graph? Go look back at the formula, the internal resistance formula. Think about the question, why? Does changing internal resistance affect the gradient? And lastly, this is the EMF. When I change the EMF, whatever the battery chemical energy has, why does the y-intercept shift? Think about these questions. Go play with it and come with a conclusion. Okay? So that's all for this one. You no, know, it's a little bit long, lots of things to show you, but go try out the questions, especially on internal resistance, because you will see this coming a lot in other past year questions. In the future ones, you'll see the practice question list get longer and longer. Okay, next time we're going to look more at energy and power. Now we have kind of an idea of, oh, energy loss, energy thing. So hang in there. In the next video, we'll look at power and energy in circuits.